do it now while you can, not later when you must. The key thing is, is like, it gives you that time to make sure that all of your uh, ducks are in a row, that everything makes sense to you, and you're not having to then try and sort of cram it in at the last moment. Um, and also to just get used to the systems. So, so the big difference essentially is uh, how it's uh, how it's tracking is set up. So Universal Analytics was all about session-based tracking, and this was fine. It was you know sort of um, page views, these kinds of things, but it is uh, constrained by time frames. Essentially, there's a limited amount of data that you can fit into a session. Uh, whereas GA4 is all about event-based tracking, and what this means is there's a heck of a lot more things that are bumped into the data that it collects because everything is an event. So everything counts essentially. So one way to think about this is um, that under the universal analytics, you would have bounce rate, right? Yeah. So people that went onto a page, did nothing, went away. So in theory, useless people we don't care about. But what that doesn't take into consideration is that whole time frame piece, right? So you could be on that page, not necessarily interacting with it, but you were there for three minutes, engaging with the content, reading the content, really becoming more of a warmer potential customer that you'd actually not consider useless. Um, and so that's what you see within the event based system of GA. So it allows you to have much sort of deeper insight into what people are doing. It really, it does come down to privacy, a lot of it. So um, for example, UA, you have to manually set up uh, your anonymization of IP addresses, for example, uh, which not everyone was gonna do, but that's a big deal for um, Google. And so with GA4, the um, IP address data is automatically anonymized. So privacy is really a big piece. It's up there with you know, enhanced conversions and all the rest of that kind of thing. Enhanced conversions really is just about how your Google tag behaves, okay? If someone was to accept the cookies on your site, your Google tag will function as normally, the data will behave, nothing will change, absolutely fine. Enhanced conversions just essentially tells the Google tag to operate in a different way when someone either ignores cookies or rejects cookies. And what this does is it um, hashes and anonymizes the, 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 sort of the login data that you have, so you're signed into Chrome or whatever. Um, and the data behind that profile is anonymized and hashed so that it's compliant with the rejection of cookies, um, but allows Google to have some level of, uh, like a starting point to then simulate what you're likely to do based on that sort of data set behind that profile. So what this allows Google to do essentially is to model the missing data. So I have um, customers who, when you just go by their accepted cookie data, their accuracy data drops like 30% of what it would have been. So there's this big gap. But by implementing enhanced conversions, they've actually been able to claw back roughly 70% of the missing data uh, to get them back much into a much more healthy position. Um, this is the kind of thing that's really, really important for customers that are tracking outside of UA, GA. So long as you have GA4 in place, then you don't have to worry so much about enhanced conversions, but if you are tracking things outside of that space, then you need to have enhanced conversions going. Otherwise, you're gonna wake up one day and be missing 70% of your data. Lots of uh, account managers here at Push are well-versed in implementing uh, both GA4 and enhanced conversions. Not only that, we have a series of great partners who can yeah. do even more technical stuff. So we have as much wizardry as is required to get that over the line. So you shouldn't be worried, just talk to us and we'll make the magic happen. Talk to us? Yes. That's it.